okay okay all right greetings and welcome back once again this is amuna um i thank everybody for joining us welcome back if you're new welcome to the platform i'm gonna jump right into it this is a short one but i thought it was interesting and telling it's the show that comes on own ready to love but we have a whole lot of discussion especially in certain communities about high value man and the promise and the person who's making these um these promises or trying to lay out the blueprint is a salesperson by nature by trade right and oftentimes salespeople their job is to sell you what happens on the back end is really not their concern so this particular clip is from a woman who was married to a high value man right he was a professional basketball player and i don't even want to ruin it so let's take a look together and then we can discuss it in the box below all right hey okay Let's keep this love train on the tracks. Our next two singles are very clear that they put family first, but that doesn't mean they're not ready to love. I'm Stacy. I'm 39 years old. I'm from Pasco Sheehan, Mississippi. I own a small business in the insurance and financial services. I was married for over 10 years. He was a professional basketball player. Pause. So Stacy's 39. She's been married for 10 years. This is noteworthy, so I'm taking notes. That means she would have been married at 29. As you can see, her body's together. She's fit, fabulous, and all of this um, stuff that's being sold, right? That's being packaged and sold to if you get into this space, you're going to be good, right? For the women and for the men. So let's continue to hear. She was married to a professional basketball player. So I had to give so many concessions until I looked in the mirror one day and I knew, like, this isn't happy. As much as you dress up to look like chocolate cake, you can't fool anybody. Boom. Pause. So she made too many concessions. High value man this, high value man that, high value man has more rights. Just be submissive and comply and do all of these things, right? And she said she made too many concessions. That means you have to give up so much of yourself to be in this space that one day, this is why you talk about solonomics and I talk about wholeness and people says, well, Amuna, what's your angle? My angle is of health and wholeness and healing, right? Longevity. So she says she made too many concessions and she looked in the mirror one day and this wasn't it. It's not just about not being happy. If the person is not supposed to be faithful, if the person is not supposed to be there in the capacity that you need them, all of these things that oftentimes are being interpreted as if I'm providing this, that means you don't necessarily have any other expectations of me. After a while, well, in her case, 10 years, that kind of gets old and stale. But let's continue. I have three awesome kids. Cameron is 19. He refused to go off to college following the divorce. He felt like the girls and I needed him, and he didn't want to, like, leave us here without him. So he's still here. He sacrificed a lot. He actually works for me. He supports my children. And that's when I realized, hey, I got me a good squad. Dayton in Houston. I don't know if you guys heard that, but if we do some quick computation, some quick math, you know, oftentimes the thought is a high, but if you have children, if you have this, he may not want you. But in this case, if Cameron is 19 right now and she's 39, that means she had to have Cameron when she was 20. So unless she met this high value man at 20, she said she married at 29. So there's a possibility that Cameron was from a previous relationship. That's interesting to know as she's talking about him pitching in to help with her children. The way she said her children, let me know that that possibly may be his half siblings. But nonetheless, he feels um, responsible for his mother and he's staying by her side. Very interesting dynamics because what we're being sold and told is a different for narrative but let's continue i found a lot of people present themselves as a lot of things that they're not the most important thing for me in a relationship is that one person that just like i got you because right now you know i do everything so i look forward to the day that i can walk in the house and i can just take my cape off and just sink into someone's arms <laughs> wait what would make a woman who's married to a professional basketball player who monetarily has all that she needs like she said she dresses it up and it's still you know is be if it's poo poo it's poo poo 
I forgot exactly what she said, so I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right? To, to go and now be the superwoman and put on her cape and do all of this. What? What would make a person? I know some people like, see, I told you there goes the statistics. 80% uh, of women initiate the divorce. In this case, one has to ask, what was taking place? And she told you that she would want to leave such a lavish lap of luxury to go struggle. Or to put forth all the effort where she's having to do it all herself. This is something to consider as we're talking about statistics. Here she is, a statistic on Ready to Love, looking for somebody who can actually say, I got you. So that says that you left a 10-year marriage because maybe you felt that that person didn't have you. Oh no, I made it too big. I'm ready to love because it's been hard on the sister. Like, my kids are trying to hook me up with random TikTokers. I'm so tired of everyone trying to introduce me to their friend. And Lord knows, I can't show up to Thanksgiving again. <laughs> Again, this year, empty-handed. So I'm ready to love because I want my partner. I'm ready to have somebody there with me. Your damsel's waiting. Come and get me. <laughs> she's feminine. She's giggling. She called herself a damsel. She says she's waiting. She All of these things. But again, it shows you the backside. You know, after the paperwork goes through, after that sale and that one little handshake, and they got you through the door, there's a lot of back-end stuff. Also, the men on these shows show you a lot of back-end stuff. They may be high-end, but they don't come without baggage, right? So when someone is trying to sell you or objectify a real human connection with you and reduce it to um, who has the money to persuade or who has the money to control one another, that is very surface and that's very shallow because on the back-end, people are humans with souls who are looking for authentic connections, and that's one of my objections to a lot of what I'm hearing in a lot of these spaces is that we're forgetting that we are souls. Money takes different forms. It comes from the, it comes from a paper, which is tree. It's the value we put on it. And in this day and time, it's sad to see that we're putting more value on monetary gains than we are doing actual souls, actual beings who come in this earth to go on a journey and we meet one another to go on this journey and help each other grow. And we're putting more monetary value on money. I mean, not value, just value period on money or the perception of prestige than we are people. That's upside down and inside out. So much so that she left money to go look for somebody who's going to see her as a person. Let me know your thoughts on this one. Like I said, it's going to be short. We'll come back again with another noteworthy session. Um, continue to love. Continue to grow. Um, continue to find your peace within yourself. So, one, everybody have a blessed day.